1937, a writer and dog enthusiast named Will Judy wrote in a training manual that dogs can only see in black, white, and gray. That line of thinking caught on, and for decades, people believed that dogs lived a colorless existence. But it turns out that though dogs are technically colorblind, they still see some color, like most colorblind humans. Hi, I'm Justin Dodd. Welcome to Misconceptions. Not being able to see any colors is just one misconception about dogs I'll be covering today, from alpha males to wagging tails. Let's talk about some good boys. Dogs can only see in black and white. The colors dogs see are more muted than the vivid hues most people see. Dogs are dichromatic, meaning they have two types of cones in their retina. Humans, on the other hand, have three. According to dog cognition expert Alexandra Horowitz, human eyes respond to the colors red, blue, or green. Dogs' eyes pick up blue and greenish yellow. They don't see red or orange or yellow the same way we do. For them, that bright red fire hydrant they're so inclined to pee on probably looks more like faint green, according to Horowitz. When you're shopping for Sparky's next birthday present, you may want to stick with yellow and blue toys, since they'll have an easier time seeing those colors. One dog year equals seven human years. If you've ever bragged that your 11-year-old family dog is actually 77 in dog years, first of all, weird brag. Also, not really correct. You are operating under the misconception that one dog year equals about seven human years. But there's no solid evidence behind that common claim. According to the American Kennel Club, this misleading idea has been around since the 50s. It's thought that it arose because people at the time realized that dogs generally made it to around 10 years old, while humans live to about 70. It's hard to predict a dog's lifespan, though. Their breed and health will affect how long they live. In general, smaller dogs tend to live longer than larger ones. Smaller breeds are considered senior when they hit about seven, whereas bigger pups enter that category at around five or six. In general, the average lifespan for a dog under 22 pounds is a bit over 14 years, whereas a dog 45 pounds or more may live to around 12. If you do want to do a bit of math to try to compare human years to dog years, the people at the American Veterinary Medical Association can help. According to them, a mid-sized dog's first year actually equals about 15 human years. Their second year adds another nine, and each subsequent human year equals about five years. If all that math kind of scrambles your brain, just stick to saying your dog is a cutie patootie stinky baby puppy prince, no matter how old they are. Dog saliva can heal wounds. If you time traveled to the 4th century BCE and visited the sanctuary of Asclepios in ancient Greece, you'd find more than just human healers tending to the ill. Dogs wandered around the sanctuary too, and they weren't there for emotional support. The animals were there to lick people's wounds. In ancient times, people thought dog saliva had curative properties. The idea can be traced to ancient Egypt, where pups were used to lick sores or wounds in an attempt to heal a person or rid them of disease. The Greeks caught on, which is why Asclepios, the god of healing, was often depicted with a canine companion. It's thought healers of yore turned to dogs after seeing them lick their own wounds, and their reasoning wasn't entirely unsound. It's been suggested that licking can help remove debris, and dog saliva does contain proteins called histatins, which help prevent infection and encourage wounds to close. But that's not all that's in there. If you've ever seen a dog snack on some old poop or proudly carry around the dead rat they found on the sidewalk, then you know their mouths aren't actually that sanitary. It's commonly said that a dog's mouth is cleaner than humans, but neither species has very clean mouths, so it's kind of like comparing a trash can to a slightly dirtier trash can. Like humans, dogs have over 600 different kinds of bacteria in their mouths. Among the bacteria typically swirling around in a dog's mouth is one called Pastorella, which can cause cellulitis, a skin infection that can be fatal if left untreated. So if you or your beloved pup wind up with any sort of wound, it's best to seek medical care from a professional. Just ignore the French saying, long de chien, long de médecin, or a dog's tongue, a doctor's tongue. Neither dog nor doctor should be licking you. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. This saying may apply to that relative who, no matter how many times you try to help them, just can't seem to figure out how to set up their newfangled Alexa robot lady. It doesn't actually work for dogs, though. Your pup can learn new tricks at any point in their life. Age may even be an advantage. As two veterinarians wrote for VCA hospitals, Adult dogs are often easier to train than their younger canine friends, specifically because they are not as active. Older dogs are not as easily distracted as pups and can focus for longer periods of time. 
This ability to concentrate helps them learn new routines more easily. So if your senior dog never quite mastered sit, it's not too late. All you'll need is a lot of patience and some good treats for positive reinforcement. In fact, learning new tricks and engaging in different activities is probably good for your older pet in the same way that puzzles and word games are good for older people. In 2018, a team of Australian scientists published a study showing that training senior dogs to play games using touchscreen computers had the potential to help maintain their cognitive skills. Your dog needs to see you as their alpha. Speaking of training, it's commonly said that a person must be the alpha of their pack. To maintain their alpha status, some trainers will advise handlers to always eat first, walk ahead of their dog, and sometimes even pin their pup to the ground to enforce dominance. But none of these methods are actually backed by science. People tend to think that because dogs are descended from wolves, they have the same social structure. But domestic dogs don't have packs. Strays may form social groups, but those loose acquaintances aren't the same as the close bonds a wolf family shares. And wolf packs almost never have an aggressive alpha who rules the others by force. In most packs, the alpha pair are just the parents, and their so-called submissives are just kids. And sure, some dogs may be aggressive, but that isn't the same as being dominant or alpha. Aggressive behavior is usually caused by fear, so trying to intimidate your dog into being a subordinate won't actually accomplish much and will likely do more harm than good. All dogs should be treated like royalty, and I mean, that's just a fact, it's science. If a dog wags their tail, it means they're happy. If a dog approaches you with a wagging tail, don't immediately assume they're happy to see you. It's true that tail wagging can mean friendliness, but that isn't always the case. In general, when a pup holds their tail slightly raised or horizontal to their body and then wags it, that's a sign of friendliness. A low tail wag, on the other hand, can signal fear. And if a dog has their tail held high and is shaking it so fast it seems to vibrate, that can be a sign of extreme excitement or aggression. Dogs only eat grass when they're sick. If you see your dog chowing down on a mouthful of grass, don't assume they have an upset stomach. The animals eat grass for a variety of reasons. Some may LARP as lawn mowers because they have some sort of dietary deficiency or need some more fiber. Some may use it as an antacid or to soothe an empty stomach, while others may chew on grass simply because they're bored or because they like the taste. Relatable. If a dog is feeling lonely or neglected, it may even turn to eating grass as a way to get their owner's attention. In general, if Fido wants to snack on your lawn, it probably isn't a great cause for concern, but just keep an eye out and make sure they aren't accidentally ingesting dangerous plants or harmful chemicals like pesticides. A warm, dry nose means a sick dog. If you boop your dog's snoot and it's dry and warm instead of cold and wet, do not worry. It's not clear where the idea that healthy dogs always have cold, wet noses came from, but anything other than a chilly, damp nose is not a sign of illness. A healthy dog's nose can have a whole range of textures and temperatures which can change throughout the day and are often affected by the weather. Booping a dog's nose throughout the day, however, is still recommended for everyone's benefit. Spaying and neutering is bad for dogs. Spaying and neutering dogs is an extremely common and largely safe procedure. And thanks to organizations that offer it for little to no fees, it shouldn't break the bank. And yet, many people are still hesitant to neuter their dogs, thanks in part to some old misconceptions about the procedure. But despite what you may have heard, neutering your dog won't turn it into a terror. If anything, your dog will become easier to handle since they'll no longer have to deal with hormone-induced desires to find a mate, which can lead to behaviors like fighting and roaming. And you don't have to wait until your female dog has had a litter to get her spayed. It's actually been shown that having the procedure done before she reaches sexual maturity can reduce the risk for some cancers by up to 85%. For female dogs, it reduces the risk of breast cancer and can completely eliminate the chance of them developing uterine or ovarian cancer, depending on the exact type of operation that's done. As with all medical procedures though, there are some risks. You should talk with your veterinarian as spaying or neutering a dog too early could lead to complications or raise their risk levels for certain conditions. A dog's size and age will help determine the safest time to get them fixed. A dog's breed determines their personality and behavior. Cut those adorable pit bull pups some slack. There's really no such thing as an aggressive dog breed. A study published in Science in April 2022 found that a dog's breed does not completely determine their behavior or personality. The researchers asked the owners of 18,385 dogs about their pet's behavioral traits then compared that to the DNA sequencing of more than 2,000 canines. 
they found that just 9% of a dog's typical behavior is related to its breed. A dog's environment and upbringing have a much larger effect on how it'll behave. A Labrador, for example, may be timid and distant if it had a bad start in life, despite the breed's reputation for being friendly and lovable. A supposedly aggressive pit bull, on the other hand, may want nothing more than to cuddle on your lap all day. Some breeds do have traits that are more closely linked with genetics, however. Huskies have a tendency to howl, and Border Collies are a bit more inclined to take directions from their humans. Those are just general trends, though. They don't necessarily tell you anything about specific individuals. Hypoallergenic dogs exist. Sorry, allergy sufferers. No matter how much money you spend, you'll never be able to buy a hypoallergenic dog. They simply do not exist. People tend to think that if a dog does not shed, then it's hypoallergenic. And while a non-shedding breed may alleviate some people's allergies, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to stay sneeze-free. Breeds that don't shed a lot, like poodles, actually have higher levels of Canis familiaris allergen 1, the main dog allergen, in coat samples compared to high-shedding breeds like labs. Low-shedding breeds like poodles, Yorkshire terriers, and schnauzers might be better choices for some people allergic to dogs and those who don't want to constantly vacuum up dog hair, but a truly hypoallergenic pup would need to be non-shedding, spit-free, and skinless. Eh, yeah, still adorable. It's a good idea to fertilize your garden with dog poop. We'll end with one for the lazy poop scoopers. No matter how tempted you are to leave your dog's waste in the grass or chuck it into the woods, just don't. Dog poop is not quite like cow or horse manure. Scientists are looking into whether there's a way to make productive use out of dog feces since it could reduce the environmental impact of all those plastic bags going into landfills. For now though, more research is needed to figure out if composting dog waste is even viable. What we do know is that it can be full of nasty bacteria and parasites that could potentially contaminate waterways, and backyard composts don't generally reach the necessary temperatures to kill off those harmful life forms. So please, do everyone a favor and dispose of your pet's waste responsibly. We've got an upcoming episode covering misconceptions about physics. If you've got a concept from the world of physics that everyone seems to get wrong, drop it in the comments below for a chance to be featured in that episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.